What's up, good people? It's your boy C Dot with from Boys to Gentlemen, and this is another segment of Ask C Dot. So I've had numerous parents reach out to me about a very sticky topic, but we're gonna go ahead and attack it head on. Um, that topic is youth suicide. It is a very uncomfortable topic. I completely understand that. Um, if that's not something that, that you're ready to address or talk about, uh, you probably won't turn the video off. <laughs> Understandably so. Uh, may not be the time for it right now. It may be in the midst of a difficult situation. And I do want to be sensitive to that. Uh, so disclaimer, we are talking about you suicide. So that can be problematic for somebody that could have just recently went through that or just being a touchy subject right, subject right now that people aren't ready to address. But with that being said, um, the questions that have been coming in, particularly about you suicide is uh, why is it happening um, at the degree that is happening? Why is it a um, option for a lot of these youth to want to take their life? Um, I see a lot of people that turn into the bashing role of just saying that this is a weak generation or you know, there are a bunch of millennials that, you know, they're just spoiled and all. That. You hear all of these negative things uh, that people try to ascribe to a younger generation. And I don't believe that's fair uh, by any means. I want to break that down a little bit. So one of the uh, let, let's go into three levels. Uh, the first one talking about the foundation. I did a video about apathy um, and definitely go and check that out. But in apathy, the goal is to not feel. And what I'm seeing is that is the perfect foundation for a group of youth that are transitioning on to a place of suicidal thoughts and suicidal actions. Um, it actually builds a culture of escape. So everything that they're doing is in an attempt to try to escape pain, try to escape whatever ailment that they feel like they may be suffering in their life. And that is a culture that we're seeing right now. And we can't just blame the youth for that because that is something that we put into place. Our dependency on substances, our dependency on money, our dependency on um, putting ourselves in position to not need anybody. I'm autonomous. I don't need anybody else. So that combination of isolation, that combination of lack of information when it comes to uh, things like depression and other issues becomes extremely problematic and really begins to set the foundation for these negative things. Uh, building right into that, secondly, uh, I believe the lack of connection. I touched on it a little bit, but our lack of connection as a people, as community, becomes extremely problematic because when I don't feel connected to another person, I'm least likely to ask for any type of assistance, to trust you with information that you need to know in order to hold me accountable to caring for myself. And that lack of connection within our communities is extremely problematic. And it's not just from the individual. A lot of families are isolated. A lot of families are not able to deal with um, the, the loss of face if your child is suffering from this. We'll often try to push them into believing that their issues are not real or they're not really feeling the way that they are. Or, you know, coming from a more stern background of, you know, you're just being weak, you're just being soft. Uh, but a lot of times us taking that mindset with the current climate that they're in makes them a instantaneous threat for suicide because it becomes a viable option through our lack of connection. There's nobody that can come and talk me off that proverbial ledge. There's nobody that can come and reach me because I have built everything on being self-sufficient. Uh, or my best understanding of what self-sufficient is. So that becomes extremely problematic and it really continues to build on that foundation that we talked about in apathy and not caring. So you go from apathy to the lack of connection with people and that isolation. Then the next step we come in to awareness of suicide becoming glorified. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not saying by any means to not talk about it, but there is a level of glorification in the way that we're bringing the awareness. Um, I think the information that we're giving would be good if we would go back and start dealing with those those fundamental issues uh, such as apathy and loss, uh, lack of connection um, so we can have in-depth conversations and have realistic conversations about how these particular things are coming out. So when you got somebody that's watching 13 Reasons Why, 
um, as an adult, you view it a certain way. But as I start to talk to some of these kids, even though they're able to relate, some of them have actually came out and said, yo, I wonder what would happen if I did that. And I'm like, oh, OK, um, you know, is this an outcry or is this just them thinking like, you know, what people even care? And, you know, I've heard that conversation happen before. Like, I wish I could sit and just watch how many people come into my funeral. And it's not so much of a suicidal mindset. It is the glorification of all the attention that comes, all of the sympathy that comes. A lot of the things that they're denied in their current state is something that they feel like they can get once they either attempt or actually commit suicide. And that becomes extremely problematic of finding that balance between awareness and glorification. Uh, so those three areas are, are kind of rough, but I always like to come uh, from a solution minded or uh, a solution oriented mindset. And what I believe are three steps that we can take currently from a community in really helping this issue is starting off by the devillainization of mental health. A lot of our ignorance, a lot of our past experience. And when I say ignorance, I simply mean lack of information. I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but many of us know so little about mental health. So I was on a conference call probably um, a week or two ago. And I asked the question, I posed it out there and I said, how, what is your definition of mental health? Most people couldn't even answer that or uh, mental illness. And um, most people couldn't answer what mental illness was. And because they lack that information, what is filling in those gaps when you hear that word? What emotional context is being laid when somebody says that they're mentally ill? Do you view that as a handicap? Do you view that as a life uh life sentence of second-class citizenship, or is it something that you have personal experience? We don't know. Number one, if you don't have the definition for it, there's no way for us to have a realistic conversation because any information that I give you on the subject or on the topic is limited to your information and understanding of what we're mutually talking about. Uh, so definitely devillainization of mental health. Uh, the next step definitely is being more attentive and accountable on the professionals, um, counselors, therapists, the people that are having access to our kids. Uh, you'll hear me say this a thousand times over. We have to be careful of good intention with poor execution. And I believe a lot of people have a great intention when it comes to working with kids and it comes to meeting some of these needs and they simply lack the execution. They either lack the know-how uh, or they lack the ability to actually execute what's needed in a case-by-case -case situation. There are no absolutes. There's always an exception to the rule. Um, and probably the last thing is the preparation for opposition. We do live in a society at this point where I see a lot of examples of doing everything to try to avoid pain only to incur more injury. We're constantly trying to avoid pain, whether it be through medicine, medication, whether it be through participation trophies. You know, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Now, am I saying trying to tear people down or have any problem with positive thinking? Absolutely not. But we're constantly seeing the ramifications of robbing kids from opposition, robbing them from the opportunity to recover uh, from rejection, to recover from um, any type of insult or recover from a lot of different areas that are character builders within life. Uh, so finding that balance between trying to protect and ultimately finding ourselves in a position um, where we are robbing people from the life skills to be able to function as they get older. You know, it may work perfectly for you while you're in the house, but the more exposure that you have to the outside world is often so much different than the climate that you try to build within your home. So preparing them to step outside the house and deal with some of the issues and obstacles that are out there is something that we have to be more intentional about and come together collectively um, and start to build those support systems and build those connections for things that we can come out there and really make that impact. In, in my closing remarks, um, any parent that's dealing with suicide in their youth, I definitely want to encourage you to, to stop thinking that you are the sole cause. Um, again, 
There are no absolutes. There's an exception to every rule. I understand there's particular situations where that, that might be the fitting bill. You may be the contributing factor to that, uh, whether it be intentional or non-intentional. But a lot of the times, parents take unwarranted and unfair amounts of blame when it comes to this situation. And it's easy for you to internalize every single issue, even though you may have absolutely no control over it. But sometimes that blame um, that you accept prevents you from being able to reach out for the help that you really need because you don't want other people to know what you feel um, and you're not willing to come and have the conversation. So those things can be sorted out. Uh, so one thing that I want to encourage you to do is to reach out um, with some boldness and with some courageousness. I, I apologize that we do live in a society where that can be problematic. It are, there are people out there that will use your information against you that will put you in, in harm's way. And there's no way to prevent that. Uh, but I use an analogy that was placed in my book where uh, one of the characters, Tamika, is talking to Aaron. And she's talking about not wanting to go to church because there are evil people in church and her personal experience and whatever the case may be. So Aaron turns back to Tamika and says, man, it's um, let me ask you a question. How many bad mechanics that you know that are out there would you say that they're more bad mechanics than good mechanics and tamika's like yeah of course you know most of the mechanics ain't worth the grease that they work in she said i feel that so whenever your car is broken that means that because there's so many bad mechanics out there that you don't go um to any mechanic you just have to buy another car she says no you go out there and you gotta work to find the good mechanics and then when you get a good mechanic hold on to it Ding! We can't change the climate in regards to what people are out there, how things have turned out to be. Uh, but I want to encourage people to not stop when it comes to getting the resources that these babies need. Um, and we also want to start brainstorming as a community so we can start offering those resources in different places. Everything doesn't have to be clinical. Um, definitely not going against any you know, mental health uh, resources and things like that. But I am saying that we need to start coming together as a community and at very least building an environment and a platform for when people do want to come out and talk about such issues that they're not feeling judged, they're not feeling um, condemned, they're not feeling uh, unfairly torn down because of the circumstance that they're in and they can come somewhere and get some understanding, they can get some wisdom and most of all, they can get some love. They can get some patience, some grace, and some guidance. We want to share our wisdom. We want to share our experiences. We're not trying to beat somebody down, even if they are making poor, poor examples and even if they are making poor choices. So coming together as a community is going to be huge. So I'm going to cut the video off right here at the sake of going too long. But I do want to encourage anybody watching this video, if you are looking for help, please reach out. If you feel comfortable talking to me, Reach out to me and we will do everything that we can to start building and climbing in an environment that we can address this issue so we don't have to bury another baby in an untimely manner. So I love y'all. I thank y'all. Uh, comment on this video. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. I appreciate y'all. And as always, the absence of a father doesn't equal the absence of responsibility. Someone or something will take that place. From boys and gentlemen, it's trying to fill that void. I love y'all.